David Biello from the Climate Change Conference of the Heartland Institute. Uh, would you introduce yourself? I'm Roy Spencer, Principal Research Scientist, University of Alabama in Huntsville. And what's your area of expertise? Well, I do global temperature monitoring with satellites, that's one thing, but I also look at all different kinds of satellite data from a wide variety of satellites to try to figure out how the climate system works. And what we're really after is how sensitive is the climate system to the extra CO2 we're putting into it. So in order to answer that question, we have to figure out how does the system work during natural climate variation. So that's, that's the thing I'm mainly interested in. And have you had any difficulties, I guess, uh, publishing your papers or, or getting your views out there? Uh, if we talk about the last 10 years, uh, there has been some trouble trying to get work published because, for instance, if you submit to, uh, for instance, Science Magazine or Nature, uh, they tend to go to a certain set of reviewers and all you need is one influential reviewer out there to look at your paper and say, this is garbage because it doesn't support serious man-made global warming, mm -hmm. and they'll throw the paper away. There's so much competition, you know, for, for papers that want to get published in science journals that all it takes is one person that doesn't like you and your paper is gone. So is there kind of a climate change consensus conspiracy to some extent? Well, I don't know what consensus means. The only consensus I know of in the science community about global warming is that it is warmed. Yeah, or at least up until six years ago, it's warm, you know. And the big question is, so what? Or how did it happen? That's where there isn't a consensus. But, you know, you notice when people say the scientific consensus on global warming, they won't specifically say what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, but that difficulty that you're facing, is that, I don't know, a conspiracy-related effort? You know what I'm saying? No, I don't think there's conspiracies. I mean, this happens in all different scientific fields where there's, you know, the group is going with one direction. I try to remind people that it was only a few years ago that these two Australian medical researchers, they had been battling for 10 to 15 years about their stupid theory that peptic ulcers are caused by bacteria. I mean, they were ridiculed at conferences. Right. Well, of course, now they're Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> of course, so is Al Gore, so I'm not sure what that means. Right, and uh, so the the papers that you mentioned in your in your presentation today uh, it looked like you were going up against Piers Forster, if uh, if I'm correct. So was he uh, was he uh, he's the one who said that uh, you know he was wrong and you were right? Uh, yes, Piers Forster was amazingly forthright about this and admitting that yes, this one thing, even though it was a sort of a small part of his paper, uh, it's an important part, and that you know their conclusion about this thing wasn't right and that the rest of the community needs to find out about this. And I was just amazed because you usually don't see that level of intellectual honesty in the scientific community. I mean, typically we're all pretty protective of our theories and our work and we really hate being wrong. That's right. true of all of us. <laughs> but isn't that how science is supposed yeah, to work? And that's what I tell people. That's how science progresses. Every, you know, all scientists are wrong. It's just a matter of how wrong you are. You know, I've had a couple of goofs in my career and, uh, you know, we immediately fix them. Uh, so that's just the way science works. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I, I look forward to being in touch in future.